What we want to walk you through today um, is basically just an overview of the curriculum um, and the final uh, strategic growth action plan that our business owners um, participate in, will have participated in by the time they um, come to you. So as far as I understand, you know, SCORE mentors work with business owners at all stages. So sometimes even before somebody has opened their business, helping them to put together a business plan. Um, what's unique about this pilot and this partnership is that all of our business owners will have completed the same curriculum. They're all established business owners. And at this point, they've created what we call a strategic growth action plan with very clear growth goals um, and action steps to get there. So they're starting from this foundation and structure um, that may be different, is likely different than a lot of other business owners that, that you work with. So we just want to make sure that you have a little bit of background and understanding of the program that they're completing before they come to you. Definitely. Sure. So I think I had the pleasure of meeting some of you guys at the, uh, one of the last SCORE quarterly meetings and I spoke briefly about the program, but this is a seven month commitment that these business owners have made to their business. And they really have the opportunity to go through, you know, we call it the Streetwise MBA and it, it does function like a traditional MBA in that they study leadership and operations, we talk about finances, marketing, sales, access to capital, human resources, the whole gamut. But like Laura said, all of this is kind of building their own muscles and knowledge uh, capacity in their own business. So they're studying their own business, making direct changes in their business, all towards the end output of creating this three-year growth plan. So they've, they've got a document where they've outlined clearly where they've been and exactly where they'd like to go. And they've created goals that they've worked on with their instructor one-on-one uh, -on -one to sort of be that roadmap to meet, to meet those goals. So for the folks who have signed up for this program, they're, they're one, two, even three years outside of the program, they still have their growth plan. And I believe um, Dick did share all of those with all of you, so you have the most recent form of that. The idea here is that you'll be able to sort of help them implement their growth plan. Um, I think we get into more specifics mm -hmm. later. Yep. And just to give you a quick little background on the two of us, um, Lindsay, many of you probably know already, Lindsay Whitehurst, she's our Boston program manager, um, works with the business owners as the, to, well, from recruitment all the way through the program and then even keeps connected with them after the program. Um, and I'm the program manager for continual engagement. My name is Laura Lee Charles, and I work with our alumni business owners all across the country. Um, yeah, leave it at that. So here are just some kind of facts about our reasoning <laughs> for working with the group of business owners that we work with, being established business owners. Um, and we'll talk at, you know, about the specific criteria in a little bit, but um, just given these facts, 50% of all new businesses will fail within five years. Um, the importance of small businesses to job creation and job growth. Um, and that the majority of services are aimed at startups, you know, there's this gap in support and opportunity for established small business owners to really help get them to the next level. So once they've made it successfully made it through that startup phase, you know, where 50% of businesses are failing and closing their doors, um, they require a different set of resources, a different type of support. And that's really what we're trying to provide with our Streetwise MBA and then with the additional services that we provide to them following their program. The solution we see as building capacity as Lindsay just spoke about. Um, so not only is it, you know, that sort of base level knowledge of how to get a business started and off the ground, but it's also thinking about how how do I think strategically to be able to take my business to the next level? What kind of network do I need? What kind of connections um, so that they can continue to grow and not just survive in their own day to day? And I would even add to that just the idea of sort of taking them out of isolation. So many of the business owners that you meet with, I'm sure they're just happy to have someone to talk to uh, who understands their problems and understands the multifacets that they deal with on a, on a daily basis. This program is an opportunity for them to be with 15 other established businesses, different industries, different neighborhoods, but really to, you know, if they say they're facing a particular challenge around meeting, meeting payroll that week, 
they can look around the room and see seven other heads nodding. You know, they're not alone in this, and the challenges that they're facing are not unique. In fact, many of the solutions to some of those challenges are right there within the room, within their classmates. So kind of building that community base and seeing other business owners as a part of their, their value network. So in terms of the learning process and what um, our approach to this curriculum is, as Lindsay just said, that collaborative learning environment is really key. Um, the iteration of strategy, you know, this, this gets at thinking about what types of systems, you know, what types of structure can be implemented in the business um, to set them up to scale, to set them up for growth. A lot of times this means the business owner stepping out of the day to day. Um, one of the reasons actually that there's such an intense time commitment is of, of our program is to make sure that the business owner is thinking, you know, about setting aside that time to think strategically. We always, you know, we say and we hear them say it's time to work on my business, not in my business. Um, and so even just the structure of that classroom time and the additional meetings with their classmates you know, that is all to really encourage that type of behavior to step away from the business, you know, learn how to delegate, learn how to put somebody else behind the steering wheel while you go out and think strategically, while you go out and connect with um, your peer CEOs, while you go out and seek resources and, and think strategically about how to get to the next phase of growth. Right, and I would say even some of the folks that, that I talk with, you know, in the recruitment process, they're like, well, what happens if a, if a crisis comes up? It's like, you'll have to manage that crisis. So when Laura Lee talks about delegation and things like that, if a business owner is so quick to drop whatever it is that they valued, whatever it is that they've invested so that they can stay there and handle that, then they really will always truly be in the business. But if you say you've got to come to class or you won't finish this program, they've invested however many of months at that point, however many dollars at that point, you know, what does it look like to truly let go of the wheel and let others do kind of with that, you know, removing the net a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, an interesting, just very quick story that I'll share. I put together a panel of um, our alumni business owners from all different parts of the country um, several months ago for an event. And we got on a conference call in the beginning to kind of, you know, go over what we were going to talk about. And the biggest topic of conversation, the point that all of these business owners in different industries of different sizes and different places across the country, what they connected on and what they wanted to talk about was the first time they went on vacation and the first time that they were able to step away and, and what that felt like and how, you know, that was experienced in their business. And they all returned home to <laughs> a business that was still standing and still existing. Um, but it was just so interesting that that was really the point of connection for them. Maybe, maybe a piece around accountability too, that, that last piece we saw, and just to reiterate that that's really where, where you guys are going to come in and provide a lot mm -hmm. of support. Um, they will have had seven months where they're really in it and thinking about their business and they're excited about their goals, but it's very easy to, to just return back to the status quo and what they're most comfortable with. And so what we hope to develop with this pilot is really kind of um, a feeder program, if you will, into direct mentorship as they finish the program. So kind of, you know, if we've got this hand on that side, we work with you guys to sort of grab the hand on the other side. And it's not that we let go, but it's, it's this continuation of support, um, sort of lessening so that it's, it's really more on them to, to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to let Lindsay talk about this next slide. Um, just since it's, it, it gets a little bit more into the, the components of the curriculum and what the business owners are actually learning throughout those seven months. Yeah, so we, we start them off with a, with a good uh, a good little gut punch at the very beginning. We talk about <laughs> leadership um, and really understanding, you know, why, why do small businesses not grow? Um, and sometimes it's a matter of looking in the mirror and seeing in what ways am I standing in the way of my business growing? So we start off with a little bit of, you know, kind of self-understanding, but also once we know that, then we can move forward. We also really set the time aside to create those goals for the business. You know, some people say, oh, I want to grow $5 million in two years. That's fabulous. But what does that really look like? And, and why does that matter? It's kind of getting back to the, the heart of why they're in the business that they are, why they started it to begin with, um, and using that motivation to drive forward. After that, we get into financial management. 
Um, I'm sure it wouldn't shock any of you guys to, to know that not everybody is fully confident in their numbers and understanding what the numbers really say about the health of their business. So we bring in a few guest experts at that time to sit with the business owners and go over their profit and loss statement. What exactly are those numbers that I'm seeing and what does it mean? Talking about cash flow, one of the biggest challenges that businesses face and reasons that they put themselves in crisis is a, an inability to manage that cash flow. And then we talk about their, their balance sheet and the different ratios that they need to create even a financial dashboard, something that they're looking at every two weeks, every month, every six months, whatever it is that's meaningful for their business. They create that dashboard while they're in the class. Um, and also sort of safeguarding against some of those deeper crises that businesses get into when they aren't fully confident in managing their numbers. Not just pulling them, not just creating numbers, but actually managing and understanding them. Um, you know, I'm sure you've all heard the horror stories about what can happen if you get a poor bookkeeper or a poor CPA and you don't have the cash on hand that you think you do. So some of this is about building that confidence in those numbers for themselves. And then we dive into sales and marketing. Um, you know, I, I am on the newsletter and I see the different workshops that you guys are hosting and it's incredible when you talk about the, the demographics that you're serving, really understanding who of your, your customers are really making you the most money and how do you find more of those folks? How do you determine what products that they really do need and want? Um, for some businesses, they, under, they realize that offering these 10 services is doing them a disservice, but in fact, if they were to invest into these three particular services, they can change their, their growth projections. Um, and then the last piece, we get into resources, and that's pretty all-encompassing and uh, pretty quick. We talk about human resources. Uh, on their growth plans, you'll see in one of the columns, it says, who is in charge of making this particular component happen? And oftentimes, you'll see their name down the entire column. So part of the work of the instructor and their CEO mentors, um, you know, their classmates, is to say, what do we do to take your name out of this column and to put someone else in it? And in some cases, they don't have anybody hired at that point, but someone that they would like to hire. So like, I would like my director of operations to do this. So in this class, we're sort of talking about, you know, what does that interview process look like? What does that job description look like? Where do I find them? How do I hire them? And then how do I hold on to them? Then we go into um, financial resources around accessing capital. This is an opportunity for them, the 15 of them, to sit with six or seven panelists, all representing different banking foundations, CDFIs, um, some of the creative opportunities we have here in Boston to loan money and to access capital. They can have that real individual conversation with those folks to learn what is out there, um, what they're, they're really eligible for and what makes the most sense for their business. The last one is around contracting. And previously this had been focused on kind of local, state, federal contracts and what that would mean to grow some of these businesses. In the last few years, we've also focused on um, corporate contracting and then anchor institutions. So they'll again have the opportunity to sit with six, you know, heads of the different levels of procurement throughout the, the city and the state. I my part of my job is to source these guest experts. And what I do is I really source the individuals who are going to be a good match for the folks in the class. So last year I had individuals who really wanted to do more work at Logan Airport. So we had the head of the supplier diversity from Massport come and join us for that. There were three individuals who wanted to work on you know, the, the new Wynn Casino opportunity. So the head of Mass Gaming came in and sat with them. So again, it's an opportunity for an intimate conversation to happen between these folks who are really making those, those decisions and our business owners so they can understand, is contracting right for my business? If so, how do I get there? If not, what other opportunities are there? All of the time that they're working on this, after each of these modules, after each of these blue boxes, they're turning in one iteration of their growth plan. So they're getting down some information, they're building those muscles, and then they turn in another plan. They get another bite of that information and they continually work on their growth plan. At the end of these 12 classes, they'll turn in their final growth plan. And that's what you guys will have a copy of before you work with these business owners. They then present that to their to their classmates, but also to a panel of list, a panel, excuse me, a panel of experts who will then, you know, praise the logic that's that's really great, but also poke any holes that they see, any last little pieces of this roadmap that they've built to grow their business to where they want it to be in three years, any little additional um, 
bits of information, any connections that they can make themselves um, to really let the business owner walk away having presented in front of a, a group of experts, which in and of itself is a, a triumph, but also to, to know that they can walk away confidently with a plan for their business. So it's a, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of investment on them, but the focus has always been about them learning for themselves um, these different content areas so that they're empowered to make decisions and no longer rely specifically on individual workshops or consultants that they themselves can speak confidently about these different aspects of their business and move forward. Great. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of just some of the additional program components, Lindsay mentioned the guest experts who come in um, that the uh, business owners then have direct connections with. Um, the CEO mentoring groups are actually the class broken down into smaller um, into smaller groups and they meet pretty much in the off weeks of the class. So if class is every two weeks on that week in between, um, they're getting together maybe four or five of them at a time. Um, you know, to, to really kind of increase that peer support. They, they do have assignments, I think, or kind of discussion questions to approach at each one of those meetings. Um, but that's just really solidifying that idea of, you know, getting, getting out of isolation, understanding that there are other small business owners, even if they're in a different industry, that you can, you can connect with and you can learn from. Um, and then the live case studies gives several of the business owners an opportunity to present in class. Um, a lot of these business owners haven't necessarily had that experience. You know, they work on an elevator pitch all throughout the seven month program. Um, but then these live cases give them an opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into one particular area of their business um, and to get feedback from their classmates and from some of the guest experts. So those are also just some additional components um, to the curriculum itself. So it truly is a ton of work in these seven months. It's super intensive, which is another reason that it's important to kind of have a little bit of a, um, a built-in support once they finish, you know, rather than kind of ending the program and sending them off into the wild on their own by working with an advisor or a mentor as they're learning how to now work this growth plan. You know, they've written it, they understand what they need, they've put the thought into it, but then to actually put it into action does require some additional accountability and support because um, it's a it's oftentimes a huge change in how they're operating their business and how they see themselves as leaders of that business. So we've talked a lot at this point about the strategic growth action plan. This is just a quote from one of our um, alumni from, gosh, quite a few years ago. Um, uh, Scott Baker from Skycom Courier, he was very successful in securing contracts, um, which is really how he was able to scale following the program, um, which really wouldn't have been possible without the program just kind of exposing him to these opportunities, understanding what it was he needed to um, put together, what it was about his business that he needed to highlight, where he needed some additional capacity in order to deliver um, on these contracts that he started winning. Um, so just a couple of quotes from him. And then it also gives you an idea of the scale. So Lindsay mentioned, you know, the anchor procurement. Here you can see that he has contracts now with Northeastern University, with the TJX Corporation, um, and through these contracts has also been able to hire 35 new employees, which is just exponential growth from where he started. Good. Yeah, so this talks a little bit about, about who you can expect to see, kind of what are our, our baseline requirements for the class. Um, as Laura Lee mentioned before, and as you guys well know, in the city of Boston, the state of Massachusetts, a lot of emphasis is placed on those um, businesses in the startup area and in the innovation space. Um, so we really focus in on those, those folks who are three or more years in business. Um, they've got a minimum revenue of 250000 up to $10 million. They've got employees on payroll. That's for a few reasons. One, they're in a place where they can scale. Two, they've got someone to delegate and there's someone to, to run the shop, if you will, while they're in class. Um, and traditionally, they're from underserved communities. Our mission at, at Innerize as a nonprofit is really focused on economic revitalization through the growth of small businesses, knowing that these business owners in our communities have the opportunity to 
create jobs, great paying jobs. The average salary for these, these jobs that are created are $50,000, which is amazing. They're creating wealth that then stays in their communities. These businesses are community-based, they often hire locally, and that money then feeds back into the community itself. These folks are also often, you know, become community leaders in a way, civic leaders. Um, they're hosting a PTA meeting, they're sponsoring a Little League, they're mentoring other small businesses to grow. So really as a small business owner succeeds, so does the entire community. So those are the folks that we focus on uh, in this program. I will note that a few of you, that some of the business owners that you're working with um, met a few of these requirements, but not all of them. Some of them have a little bit less revenue and a few different challenges, but they've all gone through this program and they do have their road plans to work with. So we, in the past, um, working with our national network of alumni, like I said, we have um, been in a position to connect some of our business owners with um, volunteer business advisors. And what we're really excited about in this partnership with SCORE in particular is that you are all bringing the knowledge and the experience of having been business mentors. Um, of course, you all have your own experience, oftentimes, you know, running businesses or scaling businesses or, you know, bringing your, your subject matter expertise, which is incredibly valuable, but also having that experience of, of already working with business owners is going to be huge. Um, a lot of the advisors that we were working with on a national level hadn't necessarily had that opportunity. So, you know, one of the reasons that we're really excited about this is you're going to be bringing that experience and we are going to be looking to you um, to sort of be the experts, if you will, on, on that mentorship piece. Um, so we don't want to talk too much about what we expect from you necessarily as advisors, but just from the perspective of our business owners, I think where you can be particularly helpful, um, as Lindsay mentioned before, is, is really being that system of accountability um, for the business owners. So even if they're coming to you with a challenge that feels like it is outside of your quote unquote, you know, area of expertise, or it's not something that you have dealt with in a business, um, just being able to be a sounding board, you know, helping to ask the right questions and helping them um, understand where the challenge is really coming from. I think what you'll see, what I've learned anyway, working with some of these business owners and advisors in the past, um, is that the business owner is, is hyper-focused on one particular, you know, challenge thinking that it's coming from one place, when in fact, if you kind of zoom the lens out a little bit, you realize that it's coming from somewhere else. Um, just like Lindsay said, help it, you know, finances, for example, helping them understand, you know, they don't have to be an accountant themselves, but if they understand what they're supposed to be looking for when their CPA or their bookkeeper brings them um, a financial statement, then, they're going to know the right questions to ask. So they may not truly have a cash flow issue, but they may be working with a CPA that isn't right for their business and so have to make a larger sort of strategic decision about where to go from there. So you can help them to zoom out. You can help them to kind of look at the root causes of some of the challenges that they're facing in relation to their growth plan and their growth goals. So that's really kind of as far as we want to go into you know, directing you or kind of telling you how to work with these business owners. It's going to be really unique for each match. Um, and we, you know, trust you to, to, to be that support just based on your own experience. So the next step is to meet with them? Yeah, so, so the plan is um, the, the kickoff will be on the morning of the 26th of March. So the plan there is to sort of introduce you to your match and give you a chance to sort of set that foundation the way that you guys always do. You know, as Laura Lee mentioned, you're the experts in the, the mentorship aspect and the counseling piece. Um, so kind of going by whatever rules that you normally like to, but having that first meeting be there at that, uh, that sort of kickoff uh, on the 26th okay. of March. And I think that Dick has um, set aside the large conference room at the Tip O'Neill building. So it'll be in, on your home turf. Um, to celebrate that, that launch. And then the idea is that after that, we'll have another 
three in-person sort of um, opportunities for all of us to get together, probably every two months or so until the end of November. The idea there being that you're, you're coming back and also kind of sharing what's going really well, inspiring some of the other partnerships that are happening, but also get a chance to network with some of the other business owners that are there. And our business owners will have the chance to network with some of the other counselors that are there. Um, and the, so, the other piece is that hopefully you'll be meeting more than just those once every two months, as, yeah. as however you guys have discussed it. But I think that our business owners will like the opportunity to know that they've really got to get some work done before those, those two month check in. I understand that. That's good. So are they going to bring their growth plans? Any good idea? Yes. Yep. So you'll, you should all have a digital copy of their growth plan, but we will ask them to bring a hard copy of it to the, that first meeting as well. I don't know that I have a digital copy. Okay, I'll I'll work with um I'll work with Dick. I think the a handful of them didn't actually send it forward, so I can work on that individually to make sure that we get those sent out. Okay, thank you. And if anyone is interested, you know, this slide just kind of gives offers suggestions sort of about how to um, engage at that first meeting, just really getting to know each other, reviewing the growth plan. Um, Again, since these business owners are starting from, you know, a place of having kind of dug deep and analyzed their business and identified these specific goals that they have, um, you are going to be able to structure your meetings around those goals. So we do have additional resources if you're interested. Um, just kind of offer some questions to be a foundation for your conversation at both the first meeting and then subsequent meetings. Um, so we, you know, we can pass this around and, and share those um, you can use them or not. <laughs> so here's the schedule um, of meetings as they are now. The launch event, I think we've already pushed back to March 26th. March 26th. Um, the follow-up meetings as of now are on the dates here, but of course we'll be in touch by, by email. Um, and, and Dick will yeah. really be the, the point of contact for the SCORE mentor side, and I'll be the, the contact for the business owners. So. Dick and I will work together to make sure that everyone gets all the information that they need. Very good. So there we are. Yeah. So your main points of contact. Um, I would like to just see if there are any questions. Um, you know, feel free to ask them here, or again, you know, you can send any questions to Lindsay or to Dick um, by phone or email. No, nope, sounds good. Look forward to the uh, first meeting. Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for, for your time and really are excited because it, it is a pilot and the idea is also, you know, we are in nearly 90 cities across the country at this point um, and there are many SCORE chapters across the country. The hope is really that we'll be able to create something here that's scalable that our other partners can utilize as well. I think we can. <laughs> Wonderful. Agree. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you very soon on the 26th. Yeah, great. So long. Bye-bye. Have Thanks a good so day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.